Hi everybody, this is Anne. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate five ways to make homemade stamps out of clay. I was inspired to make this video after seeing a version of the round stamps made by the very creative Isabella Lazan of the Gay and Gardens YouTube channel. Check out the link to her channel below. Four of five of these stamps were thrown on the wheel. I started with a half a pound of clay and threw a bottomless closed form like this. I then used a red rib to smooth and shape it. My goal was to create four short, squatty half spheres that I could decorate. I set them aside until they were leather hard. On this first one, I'll demonstrate a simple carved design from a pattern. I found this Celtic knot online, I resized it to fit the sphere, and printed it out. I then cut it along the outer edge. As the clay surface is curved, I snipped three darts into the sides of the pattern so it would fit flat on the dome, and cut a hole in the center of the pattern so it'd be easy to find the top center. I then blackened the entire back of the pattern with a sharp pencil so it was covered with graphite. To trace the design on the clay, I turned it face up, lined up the center holes, then with a sharp pencil I lightly drew around the outside of the design. To trace the inner lines, I used an ink pen and traced along those lines. The graphite will transfer down to the clay. I used a V-tip diamond core carving tool to carve shallow lines around each line. I then used this ball-tipped carver to soften and clean up the lines. Now here's the final design. You can leave it like this, or you can add more carved lines to create the illusion that they're intertwining. For the next stamp, I created raised lines by using Spectrum Raised Accent Black. These are slip-based, and they remain raised after they're fired. I lightly drew a circle around the top center of the sphere and freehanded a flower design inside of it. This will create an inverted flower design when it's stamped. For the third stamp, I applied appliques. I had this rubber mold with leaves and acorns that I thought would be fun to make into a stamp. I brushed a little cornstarch into the mold. Then I rolled the clay into small carrot shapes and pushed them down into each of the molds like this. When I lifted them out, I captured the images on the other side. Here's one of the leaves. I pressed several of these, then carefully sliced them thinly about an eighth of an inch thick from the excess clay. I then scored the backs of them and slipped them to the center of the stamp. Once they're attached, you can always carve extra accents to them if you like, as I did with this acorn. I fiddled around with the placement a bit, but I'm pleased with that. To make this next stamp, I simply stamped a design on the stamp. I had extra pieces of rubber matting from a past project and cut this diamond-shaped petal from it. I found the center of the sphere and lined up the top of the petal to that. I then used my fingers to push the ribbing into the clay. I 
I then pressed the mirror image of the petal on the opposite side, like so. Now all I had to do was line up the stamps in between each of the other two images to create this symmetrical pattern. Finally, I created a mold of the seashell to use as a clay stamp. I rolled out a thick slab about 3 8 inches thick and pressed it firmly over the shell to get a good impression. Here's one I did for the five ways to use nature in pottery video. This one's already bisque fired. I let all these pieces dry to bone dry and bisque fired them to cone 04. Here they are just out of the kiln. Now I'll show you different ways to use them. First with the Celtic knot stamp. I rolled out a quarter inch slab, rimmed it, placed a piece of plastic wrap over the top, and cut out several circles. The plastic wrap helps round off the edges of the top of the slab. I turned it over and rounded the bottom edge with my finger. Then I placed one of the clay circles on thick foam pieces. I centered the stamp over the circle and pushed it down making sure to get a good impression. As you can see, the edges of the circle rippled when I did this, so I took advantage of it. I pinched the edges where the points of the triangle extended outward. Then I rounded the edges along the triangle's straight sides. I came up with a sweet dipping bowl with a protruded design. For another variation, I asked Jim to create this triangular template for me. I traced around it and cut a slab like I did for the first one. Again, I put the slab on the foam and centered the stamp so the points were lined up with the corners. I then pressed it down firmly to get a good impression. I then rounded the edges and straightened the sides with my wet fingers. Jim says this will make a nice candy dish for a Star Trek fan. Now let's play with the slip trailed flower stamp. I paired the slab circle that I already cut and set aside with this stamp. Again, I centered the stamp and made the big push to achieve the nice imprint. Very interesting effect. The design is inverted and a little more difficult to make out at this point, but glazing will bring that out. I thought this would make a nice spoon rest, so I accentuated the bend in the clay so it would fit the cradle of the spoon, then rounded the back of the rest of the circle. To create the flat part of the bowl, I held it over my work surface and gently dropped it so the bottom would flatten out. With the applique stamp, I thought it'd be fun to vary the shape of the clay slab. I folded a piece of paper and cut the top so that when I unfolded it, I had this flower shape template. I traced around it and cut out the slab. Again, I centered the stamp and pressed it down firmly. Yay! To finish this flower bowl, I pinched the areas of the clay in between each petal shape like this. I then flattened the bottom like the last project to make this cute spring-themed key bowl. Now let's do something totally different with this stamp. I poured a thick plaster slab, let it dry for a week. I then put it on the wheel and carved a dimple out of the center and carved around it so it looked like this. I placed a quarter inch slab over the plaster and used a sponge to press the clay into the outer carved ring. Using the applique stamp, I centered and gently pressed it into the center dimple. I released the clay from the surface a little bit, then cut away the surrounding clay so that now I have an inverted cup piece. Now, what did I do with it? I threw an open bottom cylinder, the same width as the cupped bottom. I scored the edges of both pieces and slipped them together to create this cool piece. Here's the 
Here's another variation with the stamp. I cut out a tiny circle shape, made the imprint on the clay with the foam. On the side of the pot that I just made, I used a lid from a small bottle to trace a circle. When the clay was leather hard, I cut out the circle and removed the clay. I then scored, slipped, and inserted the stamped circle into the opening. I cut the edges away so it was flush with the surface. I then carved away the jagged edges until I achieved this inverted inset. Now let's try the stamped stamp. Again, I started with a circle shaped slab. As this design has four petals, I pinched the circular shape so it echoed and lined up with the four edges of the design, then rounded off the edges between the points. Again, I flattened the bottom to create this little candy dish. Another thing I did with this stamp was to create a sprig. I used the top of a Gatorade bottle to make a tiny round slab, then imprinted this into the clay. I flattened it out and scored and slipped it to the side of the vase. I then used a wet brush to seal the edges to the vase. Hmm, I can see a family coat of arms or even a company logo right here. Finally, I'll show you how to use the seashell mold. I rolled out a quarter inch slab and placed it over the mold. I gently lifted the edges of the slab and pushed it inward until it slumped to the bottom of the mold. I then used a damp sponge and my fingers to press the clay into the grooves of the mold. I removed the clay placed it flat on the table, and cut off the excess clay. Now here's the shell bowl already dried and bisque fired. Now here's the results from the glaze firing. a little pinholing on this piece. And these weren't quite dry enough for the kiln yet, but we thought we'd show them anyway. If you liked our video, Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time in the studio.